Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Bharti's Ophthalmology Tutorials. Today we will discuss about AD's tonic pupil, okay, or also called as AD's pupil or Holmes AD's pupil. This is most commonly asked for your 3 mark question as well as it can be asked for 5 mark question. Rather than that, it is more clinically important whenever you see any neurological cases. So in this video, I will be discussing in detail about the AD's pupil as well as how much to write for the 3 mark question or the 5 mark question. I have made a mnemonic which may help you people. Okay. So without much delay, let's begin our video on AD's tonic pupil. So the important word here is the tonic pupil that you should remember. So AD's tonic pupil. So how you define it? It is a neurological disorder due to parasympathetic denervation of the pupil. So let me explain this definition first. As you all know, for the light reflex, we have the afferent pathway as well as the efferent pathway. Afferent pathway is by the optic nerve, efferent pathway is by the third cranial nerve, right? And in the pupil, we have two muscles that is sphincter pupillae as well as dilator pupillae. So this sphincter pupillae is supplied by third cranial nerve, whereas the dilator pupillae is supplied by the sympathetic system. So whenever there is damage to this third cranial nerve, the sphincter pupillae is damaged. So the eye remains dilated. And that is one of the features of your AD's pupil. So it is a neurological disorder due to parasympathetic denervation of the pupil. That is the sphincter pupil a muscle. The next is what is the prevalence of this AD's pupil? How often you see these cases? It is almost 2 in 1000 population with more preponderance in the females in the young age group. So almost female to male ratio is 2.6 to 1. 30 to 35 years is the age group of females which is most commonly affected. And most commonly it is unilateral disease. So these are the epidemiological features of the AD's pupil. So now let's see the pathophysiology as well as the causes for this AD's pupil. So as I told there is damage to the efferent pathway. So the efferent pathway relays in the ciliary ganglion and then goes through the third cranial nerve to innervate the sphincter pupil and muscle. So there is either damage to the ciliary ganglion or the third cranial nerve leading to denervation of the sphincter pupil. So whenever there is denervation of this sphincter pupil and muscle, there are two important things which is happening. One is there is upregulation of the receptors in the denervated nerve ending. So that leads to super sensitivity of these nerve endings for any constrictor which you use. Second is again there is regeneration of these nerve fibers but in the process of regeneration there is aberrant regeneration means usually this third cranial nerve innervates both the iris and the ciliary body okay usually the ciliary body gets the more amount of innervation about 30 times more innervation goes to the ciliary body compared to your iris whenever there is regeneration of this uh, third cranial nerve the fibers are misdirected to the iris okay means the nerves which are intended to innervate the ciliary body after regeneration go to the iris okay hence there is more sustained meiosis whenever the ciliary body is put into action so whenever there is near reflex or whenever you ask the patient to look at the near uh, near objects the ciliary body is put into action but the nerve endings are directed to the iris hence there is meiosis and that is sustained means there is tonic constricted pupil whenever the patient is asked to do the near task that is called as light near dissociation so to explain the light near dissociation again normally the efferent pathway remains same for both light reflex as well as the near reflex so there should be equal constriction for both light reflex as well as for the near reflex but whenever these two are not matching, it is called as light near dissociation. So it can happen either with the afferent pathway defects also or with the efferent pathway defects also. Okay. So here, because of the efferent pathway lesions in the adystonic pupil, there is light near dissociation. Means for the light reflex, there is no constriction of the pupil. But for the near reflex, the pupil becomes constricted and that is sustained. Okay. So let's see the causes for this ciliary ganglion damage or the third cranial nerve damage here. Most of the times the cause for this AD's tonic pupil is idiopathic. The cause is not known most of the time. The second comes the viral infections, even the trauma, vasospasm like in case of migraine or even autoimmune diseases are blamed for this AD's tonic pupil. So these are various causes for 
adystonic pip. Hope you understood the pathophysiology now. So what are the symptoms? So you know now the pupil is dilated hence the patient is having photophobia and since the pupil is in the state of dilatation there is difficult dark adaptation. Blurred vision for both near and the distance may be present and the obvious thing is the anisocoria which even the patient will notice. Okay. What are the signs? And these are the key features of your adystonic pupil. The first thing is there is dilated pupil because winter pupil is not acting. So the first thing is dilated pupil which is not reacting to the light reflex or it may be very sluggishly reacting to the light reflex. But when it comes to the near reflex, it is very brisk as well as sustained that is the pupil become meosed and it is tonic for the near reflex. And when you examine the iris under the slit lamp, so this is the iris but there is segmental paralysis of the iris. Say this part of the iris is paralyzed. So when you examine under the slit lamp, you will see the reaction of the only this part of the pupil which is innervated. So that gives the appearance of what is known as vermiform pupillae. Okay, so the pupil will move like a worm that is called as vermiform pupil. And when you do the systemic examination, there is absent or decreased deep tendon reflex, which is one of the signs of your adystonic pupil. So, how do you diagnose this case of adystonic pupil? The diagnosis is mainly clinical. So, examine the pupil both in the light and dark as well as for the light reflex and the near reflex. So, when you do the examination under light or the bright light so the first of all there is anisocoria now say this is the affected pupil with the dilated pupil and this is the normal pupil which is of normal size so whenever you examine this patient in the bright light this normal pupil which is having normal sphincter pupillae will constrict okay so after you examine this patient in the bright light this affected pupil remain dilated whereas the normal pupil will constrict so the anisocoria will increase in the bright light that is one of the findings and then when it comes to the light reflex and the near reflex as I already explained for the near reflex the pupil will constrict the light reflex if there is either decreased response or absent response. As I told this light near dissociation is not specific for the adystonic pupil. So it is seen in all afferent as well as the efferent lesions. So bilateral anterior afferent visual pathway lesions will also lead to light near dissociation. Argyle Robertson pupil, diabetes with a third cranial nerve. So, diabetes with a third cranial nerve pansy is a very close DD for your adystonic pupil, where it will also share the features of dilated pupil, light near dissociation, and even the pupil is tonically constricted in the third nerve palsy as well. The differentiating points are you should look for the other signs of third nerve palsy like like the ptosis or even the ocular motility disorders okay and even the dorsal midbrain lesions can also lead to light near dissociation so these are the dds for your light near dissociation so the diagnosis is mainly clinical as i told but if you want to confirm you can do the diagnostic test that is with a diluted pilocarpine test so as i already explained in the pathophysiological process there is hypersensitivity of these nerve endings whenever there is damage to any nerve ending because of the upregulation of the receptors there is hypersensitivity so if you use pilocarpine which is almost in the strength of 0.125% or even 0.1% then normally the pupil will not constrict but if there is hypersensitivity of that pupil or the nerve ending then that pupil will react for even to uh, such a diluted pilocarpine so how you would do this test normally we have 1% pilocarpine which is commercially available so dilute it 10 times okay then you will get a concentration of 0.1% of pilocarpine then instill it to the suspected pupil then look for the reaction after 30 to 60 minutes which shows that the affected pupil is constricted more than the normal okay that is almost confirmatory for the ADS pupil but still we have false positive as well as false negative results with the pilocarpine test False positive, whenever there is preganglionic oculomotor nerve disorder or whenever any lesion which is affecting the third cranial nerve, then there is damage to the third cranial nerve. So, obviously, the upregulation of the receptors happens there also and hence the pupil becomes, uh, hence the pupil becomes hypersensitive for the diluted pilocarpine also. 
and the false negative results means though the patient is having ADC pupil it may not be showing positive with the diluted pilocarpine that happens if you do the test too early that is even before the regeneration of these nerve fibers is happening you have done this test means there is no hypersensitivity okay so this is about diluted pilocarpine test now we have confirmed with the diagnosis of adystonic pupil and usually there is no need of any investigation but you are suspecting some central cause as the cause for this adystonic pupil then you can order for the imaging or even you can do the syphilis which is one of the causes for your adystonic pupil coming to the treatment aspect usually it is the reassurance which is needed for the photophobia you can use the dark glasses and this accommodation paresis will dissolve over time like it may take some months to years but still it can resolve and the patient may have good near vision as well as the distant vision and if it is so bothersome you can use either diluted pilocarpine or the diluted physostigmine uh, to take care of the pupil but you should be very cautious whenever you use the pilocarpine because it can lead to the brovic as well as the retinal detachment so let me summarize this adystonic pupil once so by definition it is neurological disorder because of the parasympathetic denervation to the pupil that is the sphincter pupil and muscle the prevalence is 2 in 1000 population with a more preponderance in the females young females unilateral cases the pathophysiology is the damage to parasympathetic ganglion that is ciliary ganglion which will supply the iris and the ciliary body because of the damage there is one thing that is supersensitivity because of the upregulation of the receptors the second is because of regeneration and there is aberrant regeneration which will lead to light near dissociation the causes are like idiopathic more commonly then the viral infections trauma vasospasm as well as it can be autoimmune disease the symptoms are mainly because of dilated pupil the patient will have photophobia difficult dark adaptation blurred vision for both distance and near and the more obvious symptom is the anisocoria so the signs are more important dilated pupil no or absent light reflex brisk and sustained near reflex segmental paralysis of the iris that is vermiform pupillae absent or decreased deep tendon reflex so how do you make the diagnosis mainly by the clinical examination but you can also do the pilocarpine test when you do the clinical examination you will see there is increased anisocoria in the bright light and when you do the light reflex as well as the near reflex there is obvious light near dissociation but these are the differentials for the light near dissociation coming to the diluted pilocarpine test where we use 0.125% of the pilocarpine so when you use this diluted pilocarpine the affected pupil is constricted more than the normal false positives are seen in other third cranial neuropathy also false negative is seen when it is done too early so the treatment options are reassurance you can use the dark glasses for the photophobia accommodation and the paresis will usually recover in 6 months to 1 year time and you can use the diluted pilocarpine if it is very much bothering so now how much to write for 5 mark question as well as 3 mark question so whenever you are asked this AD stonic pupil for the 5 mark it is better to write all this what I have explained just now but you are asked for the 3 mark question just write the definition first okay then the pathophysiology you can explain if you are interested but still optional the important things which you should explain whenever it is asked for 3 mark question is the signs okay so write all these signs which is because of parasympathetic damage to third cranial nerve that's more than enough for your 3 mark question so this is the mnemonic i have created hope this will be helpful for all of you to remember the ADS pupil or the features of ADS pupil easily so the ADS pupil a stands for absent light reflex with a preserved near reflex there is absent knee jerk and autoimmune disease is one of the causes for ADS disease D stands for the dilated pupil I stands for again the causes like it can be secondary to the viral infections or it can be even idiopathic S stands for the segmental paralysis of the eye sphincter leading to vermiform pupillae and the P stands for this parasympathetic damage which is the cause for ADS pupil so if you write this much for your 3 mark question that is more than enough okay so hope this video on AIDS tonic pupil is useful to all of you if you like my videos please do subscribe to my channel press the bell icon for further notifications please do leave your valuable comments thank you so much